the most frequent questions I get asked on my channel is, I'm looking at buying this Saab, what should I look for? Is there anything special I need to look for? Or I just get general questions about Saab ownership and what it's like. So today I put together a list of nine tips and tricks to Saab ownership, sort of a crash course, a 101 of some basic things that you should know before you buy a Saab, or if you already own a Saab, maybe some things that you don't necessarily know that you probably should. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get into it. This is also the first video I'm doing, one, using my new iPhone. I might start filming with my phone some more. This is an iPhone 13 Pro. Um, and two, first video also with this in the backdrop. So we'll see how big of a difference these couple of things make. Um, but yeah, let's get into it. So first thing I want to talk about, the first tip and trick is really, you know, if, if you're going into this car, you don't know much about cars, really the best thing to do is to have a Saab specialist inspect it. Now, there aren't Saab specialists on every corner and in every town or anything like that. Um, so even just taking it to a general mechanic could really help. But when it comes to buying these cars, there isn't really anything out of the ordinary that you need to look for. A lot of people ask, well, is there anything special about this car I should look for? And for the most part, generally the answer is no. I mean, you want to check normal things like, are there any leaks? Um, are there any, you know, mounts that look bad, bushings, things like suspension that might need to be replaced, your brakes, your tires, all those basic things that you check on almost every other car. So um, one thing you could do if you have access to it is bring a Tech 2 um, and you could scan the car for all sorts of codes, whether it be, you know, a check engine light or all other sorts of little non-check engine light related codes, I guess, that come on these cars that we could see any little detail that could be wrong with it. Second thing I want to talk about is maintenance. And maintenance is so important on these cars as it is with most automobiles, but especially on Saab. So I've noticed, you know, one thing I always tell people is try and buy a Saab that has a good maintenance history. So every Saab, every car that I've owned, I've always kept a maintenance sheet of anytime I do an oil change, anytime I fix a leak, anytime I do suspension or anything like that, I always write it down, the date, the mileage, etc. Both for my reference and in case I ever sell the car, people can see all the work that has gone into it. So if you can find a car that has any sort of maintenance records or receipts, um, that can go a long way in help proving that the car has been well taken care of as well as just kind of the general eye test. Does it look like it's been well taken care of? And, you know, a lot of the times it seems like if a car hasn't been taken care of on the outside, it probably wasn't taken care of under the hood. Um, that's not always the case, but a lot of times it can be the case. Third tip I want to offer you guys is to only buy OEM parts. Now, I see this a lot on Facebook groups or people asking me is, hey, I have a misfire. I replaced my coil packs, but I still have a misfire. Well, did you buy OEM coil packs? No, I bought the AutoZone ones. That's probably why you still have the misfire. So I get it that you might want to try and save money, um, but when it comes to these cars, it's always best for the most part to buy OEM replacement parts. They generally cost a little bit more, but that's for a reason. And trust me, it's worth the extra money. And of course there are some cases where you can get away without buying OEM parts, such as, uh, you know, when, I, when my AC condenser went bad on my Arc, I just bought a Rock Auto one for a third of the price and that worked just fine. So there are little things here and there that you can sort of cut corners on and get non-OEM ones, and that's fine. But generally, for the most part, it's best to just buy OEM Saab parts. Fourth thing I want to talk about, leading directly off of my last point, is where to buy parts. So I have done an entire dedicated video on this, on where you can buy parts, both new parts or if you're looking to save money, but you still want to buy OEM and you want to get something that's used. Um, so I'll highly advise you check out that video in the top corner up here where I talk about pretty much every single Saab parts resource that's in the United States. If you're outside of the United States, um, I'd recommend joining some international Facebook groups or Saab Facebook group for your country because they'll probably have some better information. Um, but generally speaking, the best place to order parts from where I always order my parts is eSaab parts. Um, they are fantastic. Their customer service is amazing. They always have stuff that you need and they always have it at a good price. And leading off of that buying parts, people think, oh, well, do they not make parts for these cars anymore since Saab is out of business? And unless you're buying like a 1980s or older Saab, which even for some of them, you can still get just about any part you need. But if you're buying a, you know, a GM era Saab, anything that's from the 90s or newer, you can still get just any part that you need 
um, with the exception of some very like minor little things here or there, which most likely you probably won't even need to replace. Like for example, if you own a 94X and you need a rear tail light or something, you know, like things like that might be no longer available. But for the most part, like for your new Gen 93s or your 95s, you're gonna be able to find any part that you need. Fifth thing I wanna talk about here, and this is another one of the most important ones, is use your resources. Join Saab Facebook groups. Um, I pretty much exclusively use Facebook for the Saab Facebook groups, the Audi Facebook groups, and things like that. Forums as well, even though a lot of the forums are outdated and old by now, they do have still bountiful amounts of information that can be useful to you. You know, use Google. Um, people ask me all the time, you know, I have this problem with my car. What's the pro what, you know, what, what's, what's the issue? And I sometimes know the answer. Sometimes I don't, I'm not an expert. I'm not a trained mechanic. I'm just a guy who makes YouTube videos. But if I don't know the answer, I will almost always direct people to Facebook groups, forums, or just search Google like Saab P0101. Like, what does that mean? What could be the cause of that? And there's you know there's almost always an answer and i think facebook groups are probably the best resource because there's so many smart people in there that are always willing to help next thing i want to talk about number six is always have two keys this applies to new gen 93s uh, 95s old 93s ng 900s just really any sob or any car you should always have two keys so if the car does not come with two keys i'd recommend getting a second one made um, for all these cars, you will need some sort of programming for the most part. For example, on the new gen Saab 93s, you buy the key fob blank. These Saab parts can cut the actual blade for you, but the blade isn't what actually goes in the ignition. It's the actual key body itself. And that needs to be programmed with the tech too. I usually program people's keys for like 40, 50 bucks. Um, so for me, in my opinion, always have two keys because if you lose that only key you have or it goes bad for some reason you then have to start replacing other modules as well as getting the new key so it's good to just have the peace of mind uh, in case you ever misplace your key or something ever happens to it just to have a backup because you never know it'll end up costing you hundreds if not maybe a thousand dollars or more depending on who you go to and what parts you need if you lose your only key. Seventh tip I want to advise you all on is know some of the common failure points on these cars. Now, I was, you know, I mentioned earlier how maintenance is crucial. Now, that doesn't mean a car that's been well-maintained is gonna be problem-free, but it does give you a much better chance of not having issues. However, there are still common issues associated with these cars that you see all the time. Um, so I have a common problems video on both the 9.5, the, uh, NG93 2.0 and the NG93 2.8. I will link those all uh, up in the top corner throughout this little segment here. So check them out if one of them applies to you. But you'll want to do some research, check the common problems, and you know you can see if those have been addressed or if that car might have that problem, might be susceptible to it. Um, one of the big things being like coil packs or DI cassettes if you have a 9.5. Um, it kind of just depends, you know, on the car or. ECUs on the new Gen 9.3s, the 2.0s, that you know, just some of the common failure points that always seem to come up, and what also might be associated with that failing or a symptom of it failing. Number eight is know how to fix the car if it breaks. Now, this one, I, I want to be careful how I word this because I know some people either just don't want to work on their car, they might not have the resources or the tools to do it or they might just not have the knowledge and, and they're not capable of doing it. And that's completely fine. But I always recommend, you know, if you're gonna own one of these cars, it's generally best to try and do the work yourself um, because Saab specialists, Saab mechanics, there aren't many around. So generally it can cost a fairly good amount to do certain repairs. So thankfully these cars, at least in my opinion, are very simple to work on for the most part. Um, so I do about 95% of the work myself saves me a lot of money. It also gives me an opportunity to make videos to show you guys how to do the repairs. But you can get a lot of repairs done on these cars with just a basic tool set. You don't really need many specialty tools for the most part. So generally speaking, if you can do the repairs yourself, try to do it. If you're not someone who's mechanically inclined but you're willing to learn, this can be a great opportunity and a car for you to learn on as well. And unfortunately, a lot of general auto shops won't necessarily want to touch Saabs. They'll see, oh, it's a Saab, like 
we don't work on those, even though at the end of the day, quite frankly, they're a lot similar to some of the other GM era vehicles, especially if you have a new Gen 9.3. Last tip number nine I have for you guys is know some of the things that you shouldn't do to these cars or just sobs in general. So since I have most experience with NG 9.3s, I'm gonna rattle off just a couple of them here. So first off, don't put a blow off valve on your car. It will give you a check engine light. You will get roasted by people on Facebook. Number two, don't put LED headlights in without proper programming because they will flicker. They will give you errors. Um, I do have a video showing how to properly program LED headlights. If you're interested, you could check that out in the top corner. Like I mentioned earlier, make sure you're using OEM parts, except in the few instances where it's okay not to use OEM parts because generally if you cheap out and don't buy OEM parts, it can end up costing you and then you've just wasted money on your non OEM parts. So just kind of know the things that you shouldn't do with these cars, which hopefully this video has provided you with all the framework to know what you shouldn't do to these cars. But yeah, so there you have it guys. That's really a crash course tips and tricks on Saab ownership. If you do have any other suggestions that you could offer people, new potential owners, um, leave those down below in the comments. Really at the end of the day, these cars aren't a whole lot different mechanically and under the skin than uh, just about any other car on the road. So don't be afraid. Um, they are, you know, great cars when they're well taken care of. I've absolutely loved every single Saab I have owned. So yeah, thank you all so much for watching. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed, and I'll see you all next time.